Hey guys, it is today to do a little bit of target practicing in the backyard. And also I want to share with you some of the guns that I use for home self-defense. And it's always good to get out and practice and use them every once in a while. Get used to the sound, get used to everything, because when that moment happens, unexpectedly, you need to be ready. You need to be ready in the mind. You need to be ready to be able to grab and your reflection, your, your uh, reactions will happen right. Okay, this is a 22 here. Well, I gotta put this on a stand or something. This shoots a 22 long rifle. This is a 380. I uh, added a little bit more on the grip. I like to have a good grip on it, a little bit bigger than what the factory gave. This one here, I changed the grips on it too. I did a little modification. I like the way the grip, you feel comfortable. When you grab it, you feel comfortable. This is a 38 snub nose. I've got it set up for like a uh, pocket pistol. This is a little 22 Derringer. It's set up for a pocket pistol. This is a little 25. It is set up for like a pocket pistol. Now, I modified a holster here to make it a pocket pistol for it. I had uh, cut off the bottom here and then sewed it back up along the bottom and then took the part that I cut off and put it over here and sewed it on to where I'd have a place for an extra magazine. And um, it fits in the pocket real good. Well, wrong way, hang on. One hand, one hand stuff. And it'll fit down in your pocket, nobody don't even know it's there. But the uh, legislator here in Louisiana approved a non-carry permit, that way you can you can carry it, you know, a, a concealed, concealed, uh, non-concealed permit. In other words, you didn't need a permit to have carry a concealed. And then our great governor down here decided to vote against it. I mean, he vetoed it. So, I can't carry this or it's a fine, a six months in jail or a five month, I mean, $500 fine or both. The fine, I could probably pay. It'd be worth taking a chance for the fine. But the time in jail, six months, I don't want to do that. I got plenty of other stuff I need to be doing. So, what I decided to do is uh, don't carry it concealed. Well, it is concealed, and then it's not. Let me show you what I've done. Okay, I ordered a small holster to go on the outside. This one here. That way, by law, it's not, it's not, you know, concealed. And uh, the, the one thing I like about this holster, it's got a magnet on it to where you just can't flip. You got to Watch it. Look, it almost, it, it knows where to go because there's a magnet in it. And nobody cannot grab it and pull this off of there. So you're more secure with this. But what you do is you, you take your hand, you wipe at, swipe at it, pulling that off first, and then pulling your gun out. And it's good to practice at this because you never know when you may need it. But at the same time, you know, running a business and also, you know, going uptown, you don't want everybody to know you got a gun. You know, they may want to take advantage of you or whatever. So my shirt tail kind of covers it up. Now, if there's a police officer or somebody of importance like that that need to talk to me, all I got to do is just raise this up and leave it like that. It's unconcealed. 
So I believe I will get, get by with this. Now the 38 right here, the 38 right here is for a back pocket. It's designed set up for a back pocket. Let me show you how it's set up. This can go in your pocket to hold a gun. That way it, 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 it's, it's, it's straight in there. Uh, they can't see the bottom of it. They can't see the shape of the gun. And this, with the handle, the butt of it sticking out, it looks like a gun. But with this rag on there, you can still grab it and pull it out. See, now it looks just like a rag. But if you need to, you can pull it out, just leave the rag on there, and be ready. But in a way, this is concealed. This is concealed. Uh, I won't be able to go uptown with this gun like this until that something changes where they revoke that uh, permit back in to where we can carry concealed. But I do like to set up on it. Okay, there's a little 22 Derringer. I've got a piece of leather. I drilled a hole through here, put a piece of leather in it, and let me show you the purpose for that. You're just sliding your pocket down to the bottom and just leave the leather out. And if you come into a situation that you're going to need your gun and just reach down here and, and then put the leather the leather knot around your last finger here and when you pull up you're right there you're right there slide it back in your pocket leave the leather out yeah the knot Find a knot right behind your little finger, and when you pull up, there it is. Really, that knot should be tightened up a little bit further. I could slide it down some. But anyhow, that's good for now. I'm always tinkering with stuff. Okay, this 38, I mean this uh, 380, like I said, I added a bigger grip on it because I want to be able to feel the gun in my hand and the one they had the, the factory one is a lot smaller and I've got this one set up to where it is a strap on uh, I've got some mace in here in case I need it a flashlight here in case I need it and then an extra clip up here in the front. This this holster came with this 380. That way, if you got to go out at night around your business or your house or your yard. You can just strap this on, and it's a lot easier than trying to run this holster into your belt on your pants. Now, I wish this had the magnetic, but you got to run your finger down in there and clip it loose to pull it out.
and it snapped back in there again. But you got to run your thumb down in there and push it, then come up with it, and then you're ready. Now this 22 here, it's a clip-on also, I mean a strap-on. I added a throwing knife here, just for the heck of it. Uh, extra pouch here in case I need to put stuff in it. It's got a magazine on the front for it. Okay, like I said, it's a strap-on, and it's a long gun. It's, it's good for shooting some good range. But what you gotta do to be able to pull it, you got a little uh, clip, a little snap down in here. You gotta break that snap loose. You gotta break that snap loose. And then you pull it out. down there, break that snap loose, then pull it out. But I like the grip on it. It's got a lot of, a lot more shaping here to the hand and everything. You got to feel comfortable with a gun. When you pull one on somebody, you're probably going to be a little nervous. It's good to have what's in your hand you feel uh, devoted to, you feel comfortable with and that's where your hand goes. Okay, I am gonna do a little target practicing and it's good to be safe. I like to wear earmuffs and some kind of safety glasses and some gloves because you don't never know how a gun's gonna react when you hadn't shot it in a while or when it's gonna mess up. You never know, it's good to be you know, just if you're practicing, you get, you know, you've got the gloves, wear them. Battery went dead. I don't know what all I got recorded, but um, yeah, usually for home and in intrusion. You're going to be probably anywhere from 5 to 15 feet away from the intruder. And that's what I've got the, uh, the target set up for. Now I've already fired twice. I don't think it recorded it, but I've fired twice. And I'm on each side of the, the dot down there. Now, as you can see, I'm pretty close to the little black dot. It's only 15 feet away. But that's also due to the long barrel.
Well, I mean, you really have to pull on that trigger. I don't know what the uh, pressure on that trigger is. But as you can tell, I've hit off to one side down there twice. Might have been because I had to pull on the trigger so hard. I'm not sure. Let me try it one more time. It's still shooting off to one side. And there's nothing that I can set on here to adjust that. But like I said, with an intruder, you'd hit him. You'd hit that intruder because you're 15 feet away. That's the design for these pocket pistols. It's because they're... I like the hammer on them. But that's the reason for the pocket pistol. little derringer That's both shots. I can't tell where they hit, but it, you know, it hit down there. You're close enough to the intruder, you know you had to have got them. I like the hammer. Boy, that trigger is easy to pull. I mean, it, how about, I didn't even name it, I was already pulling it. This is a single action. You got to repull this each time. This uh, hammer. It won't repull itself. I mean, reset itself. It's not a double action. Boy, it pulls easy too. But yeah, you got to repull, repull the uh, hammer to shoot again. Okay, it's chambered. It's chambered. It may need to be clean. Okay, it's not the glove. It's catching the glove right here. I want to take the glove off. It's such a small gun. Doing fine now. It may just need to be cleaned or something. But see, it's chambered now. It's showing it's chambered. Put it on safety for right now until I unchamber it or whatever. And it may be good. I'm sure it's good to keep one chambered on safety as you got it in the house.
Okay, now it's time to look at the bigger guns in case you get more than one intruder. Um, you might need something a little more heavier that uh, do what you need to do. Take on several people. You never know about this. They may have guns too or a knife. But uh, this is this is what I've got. I put it in a guitar bag where it's kind of stashed. Nobody don't see it right away if they come in. May take two hands to get it out. I don't know. But it's a 22. And usually when I shoot it, I shoot it longer range over in that corner of the pond. Which I borrowed this from down there. This this poster here or, or target is usually down there. But we'll shoot for down there. These are the clips I got for it. This is, uh, I think 30 rounds, two 30 round clips, and this is a 20 round clip. And I also got a brass catcher on here. And I've got side scopes plus the top scope here. But I have not set in, I haven't adjusted the top scope yet. But the side scope, I just put that on there and they pop up, both of them. And I'm gonna try using that, the side scope. And I got a chamber. I'm aiming for that little piece of metal down there. Well, I must be off because I didn't hear it ding. It would have moved or something. It's set up on a hinge where it moves. So I probably got to set this in. I'm not doing it now. But there is a place to set it right here. And I need to set this one up too. Put it back on safety. Here's another good home invader type gun. It's a big one, but it's a shotgun. When I bought it, somebody had done sawed off the barrel where it was illegal. And I didn't want to take a chance, so I, I welded it on. You can barely see it under there. I welded it on an extension barrel to the, on the outside of the original. Not on the inside, the outside. But, uh, yeah, good home defense weapon. In case you get several people, this is what you're going to need. Well, I think I got the bullseye. Hey guys, get out and practice with your guns every once in a while and stay familiar with them. Because if that invasion ever happens, you need to be more ready than they are.
they're going to be a little scared coming in, but you need to be frightened. So frightened that you'll grab your gun and shoot, shoot them either in the leg or shoot them in the back or wherever. Shoot them in the chest. Talk at you later. Bye. You in the video are giving us a like or subscribing. It makes us want to bring on a little more entertainment. Don't you agree?